Peace, everybody. It is so great to be here. I'm grateful for you listening, too. Um, I'm going to read three short poems, and they're all um, in the voice of Jack Johnson. I'd like to give you just a quick overview of Mr. Johnson so I don't have to stop in between the poems. He was the first African-American heavyweight champion. He won in 1908. He beat a guy named Tommy Burns, who ducked and dodged him for about two years before finally agreeing to fight him. His parents were slaves, so he's the first generation after emancipation, and his favorite uh, author was Shakespeare. Battle Royale. Back then, they chain a bear in the middle of the bear garden and let the dogs loose. Iron chains around a bear's neck won't slow him too much. A bear will always make short work of a dog. Shakespeare said Sackerson did it more than 20 times to dogs and wildcats alike. And since most creatures are naturally afraid of bears, there wouldn't always be much of a show in the bear garden. So the handler sometimes put the bear's eyes out or took his teeth to make the fight more sporting. I believe you need eyes more than you need teeth in a fight, but losing either makes a, little, a bear a little less mean. Once baiting was against the law, some smart somebody figured coloreds would fight just as hard if hungry enough. So they rounded up the skinniest of us, had us stripped to trousers, then blindfolded us before the fight. They turned us in hard circles a few times on the ring steps like a motor car engine before pushing us between the ropes. When the bell rang, it felt like I got hit by, from eight directions. And I didn't know where those punches came from, but I swung so hard my shoulder hadn't been right since because the man said only the last darkie on his feet gets a meal. Gold smile. It's got an epigraph from Shakespeare. Teeth had a style in thy head when the mouse was born to signify thou camest to bite the world. It's from Henry VI. I should probably mention right now that <laughs> Jack Johnson had gold teeth. <laughs> Guess that would help. Gold smile. They call teeth dent in France, and the name makes sense the way teeth do what they do to bacon and shoulders and cakes. The French word for gold is or so when the folks in Paris describe my smile, it sounds like what happens when I punch a door. Dense door. Dense door, the French children say when I open wide. Dense door, Etta says when she locks herself in the powder room. Tommy Burns said dense door when I was hooking him into asking for forgiveness. His people back in Canada would have said the same exact thing if they were in Sydney to witness our spectacle. Before we got into the ring, I told Tommy, the only reason I got these gold uppers was to make every bite of my food twice as expensive. <laughs> this is the last one. Um, it's called Il Travatore. Jack Johnson's favorite uh, opera was Verdi's P. <clears throat> Il Travatore. The first time I heard the aria, it was like sunup after the great storm. The woman's voice rising, then rising more, as if the one of it all wouldn't allow her another breath. Like road work when you've punched yourself out. Like Tommy Burns catching my gut hook. Like the first I saw of Etta. Like the sound of the crowd in Reno going wild when Jeffries couldn't go on. Like going up the steps to the Cafe de Champion with the crash of gunshots in Etta's rooms. Like find an Etta on the floor with a halo of blood getting bigger by the minute. Like the nurse is not nursing but crying and pointing at the gun still hot in Etta's own hand. Like realizing Etta's still breathing, whispering a libretto on the heels of her last breath. You did this, Papa. You did this. Thank you. <laughs>